What's the longest you've gone through a video game without knowing a basic feature or ability? Accidentally learned that holding down the interact button when drinking water in Fallout makes you drink infinitely. I spent so much time going tap happy to refill health thirst when I could have just held it down. Oh the toilet rads. Crap, this changes everything. Until now in order to get radiation poisoning for the survival guide, I've been having to sip myself half to death. I'm Swedish, and got my first Pokemon game at 8 or 9. It was Pokemon Ruby, and I loved it a bit. Only problem? I didn't know English. Somehow I still managed to complete the game. Several times. However, the first 20-30 times I played through it, I never challenged the Pokemon League. Because I didn't know where it was and could never find it. I didn't find Pacific Log until a year later, when I had learned enough English to understand some of the dialogue. As a Finn I know how this feels. I recently played a game some RPG. S from my youth, Pokemon Red being amongst them, and it was surprisingly simple and much more convenient to get crap done when you actually understood the dialogue. Of course back then there were no Google Translate etc. So if you wanted to translate something, it was word by word from a 10 kilogram dictionary. Multiple playthroughs of Fallout 3 and New Vegas before finding out that you can select the symbols when hacking a computer to remove duds or replenish your allowance. AWW man, all these years and I just relied on a lucky guess number of letters coinciding with the, the actual word and multiple resets. Goldeneye, spent about 2 days trying to get through the big gate the truck stops at on the first level, was young, had my dad help, he couldn't figure it out either, turns out you just press B on the door pad, 2 days. My brother and I spent weeks on the statue park level. At the end where Trevelyan has Natalia. We needed the player's guide to figure it out. A friend of mine played nearly the entire storyline of Red Dead Redemption without knowing how to stop his horse. He just crashed into walls or rocks if he wanted to stop her. I won $100 in Liar's Dice without knowing I could look my dice. I was new to the Elder Scrolls series. When I first played Skyrim I didn't know you could fast travel. So literally walked everywhere up to about level 43 when I accidentally clicked a location on a map and got the option to fast travel. I kept hiring the freaking wagon. Anybody who has played Assassin's Creed 2 will know what I'm taking about. In the flashback to Alter, there is a tower to climb, but the first handhold that players are trained to spot and aim for is slightly too high to reach. However, there is a small lantern suspended on a horizontal beam. Every attempt to free run onto this beam fails from all angles. It turns out that the character can do a stationary, standing vertical jump up to this bar. The standing vertical jump is used exactly one time in AC2 and is completely useless in all other climbing endeavors in the game. It took me 2 hours to figure this out. This was one of the few frustrating parts in the game. AC4. I went through the entire game not knowing that a heavy shot existed. One day I decided to just hit fire without aiming and flaming cannons came out. I was so confused. The reverse. My sibling told me that pressing X during another player's shot in Tiger Woods PGA Tour would make the shot go wrong. After a long time of trying and failing to press it at just the right time I realized it was a ploy to stop the very vigorous real world attempts to make each other mess up. Man, that is some smart thinking. I didn't realize how to parry in Dark Souls until I played the game on New Game Plus. I beat the entire game in the final boss without parrying. I cried. I know how to parry, but I cannot freaking use it. I know the theory behind it, but whenever I go to use it I mess up and start getting hurt. Frick that crap. I played Final Fantasy X when I was 7 with no memory card and completely ignored the sphere grid aka the leveling system. I made it all the way to the first since born GUI fight before getting a game over. Pretty good for a completely unleveled party, at least, I think so. The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker was my first Gamma Cube game, so I was really excited to start playing it. I got through the first part fine, and then met that red boat, the King of Red Lions, that Link uses to travel around the world. The boat tells me to go to Dragon Roost Island, which on the game map is like 4 ocean squares away, so I get in the boat and hold down the R trigger, which makes the boat inch forward. Man does it take a long time to get to that island, did I make it? 
do the quest, whatever, and then repeat the process to get to the next island, and the next one, and the next one. Finally, I end up getting the ability to use bombs while on the boat to make a cool cannon to shoot monsters, and my little brother comes in and asks me why the heck I'm equipping bombs but haven't equipped the cell the entire game. This was after about 25 hours of gameplay. TL. DR. Would have gone through the Wind Waker traveling 20x slower than I was supposed to because I didn't realize that the boat was supposed to have a sail. Oh my god. It must have taken you hours to get to the next island. This is hilarious. For years I didn't understand why there were numbers in some of the squares in Minesweeper. I just clicked crap hoping I didn't explode. All the while wondering how so many people could be fascinated by such a stupid game. It took me forever to realize you can set a flag for yourself by right clicking the mines. I always thought you had to either remember all of them or deduce which ones are mines all over again all the time. Christ, if you've ever played Guild Wars 1, I had the freak up of a lifetime on that one. So after the entering into the real game world, after GW's equivalent of New Byland, you are in a desolate wasteland devoid of any kind of happiness. I explored every inch of this place for over a goddamn year. A year. I have no idea why I found it fun. Then one day, I realized that I could these mission things that would advance a storyline or something. I almost wept when several hours later I had finally seen the first living plant in the game for over a year. Seriously wasted so many hours in that hellhole. Frick you old Ascalon. For the bloody life of me I can't find it but there was a post on the GW2 subreddit of a guy detailing his ascension to level 80 all within the starting slivery zone. This zone is within the dream so their character isn't even awake yet. The creatures ended up basically reward 2-3 XP when you need like 100,000. I didn't know I could move objects in Skyrim until about 100 hours into the game. Same. I would just keep running into the small objects to move them. I was 12 years old and had a PlayStation 1 for Christmas. I had two games with it, one of which was Tomb Raider 2 that I was very eager to play. Take into account that I was brand new to having a games console and up until then I had only played on a Commodore 64. So I had the main menu loaded up and scrolled through all of the options. As far as I was concerned the passport icon was only for game settings and the option for new game didn't come up automatically. So I decided that selecting Lara's home was my best bet, since that was the first thing I had read about in the manual that came with it. For 3 days, I played on Lara's home. After playing the crap out of the obstacle course, running helplessly into the groaning butler and desperately trying to find the dual pistols, I was getting a bit tired of it by the third day. Luckily, my cousin, a few years older than me, visited just after Christmas and had owned a PS for many years. He listened with pity on his face as I told him about my very boring experience with the first level of Tomb Raider, and, of course, I watched in amazement as he selected new game from the passport and I got to play the actual first level of Tomb Raider 2, with dual pistols, enemies and even cutscenes. I was so excited that I didn't even feel stupid about it until many years later. TL. DR at 12 years old, I got a PlayStation 1 for Christmas and played on Lara's home for 3 days, completely missing the option for new game. Oh god that old butler would just show up behind you with no warning at all. Used to scare the crap out of me as a kid. I didn't realize until I was halfway through Bioshock Infinite that you could use possession on the Vigors and ammo vendors to get coins. I played through about half of The Last of Us before I figured out the flashlight. I don't have any good justification for that. Running around the hotel basement in the dark, with a bloater chasing after you must have been fun. Dumb young self didn't know you could shoot the dinosaurs in Dino Crisis 2. Lots of retries, but went pretty far just stabbing the crap out of dinosaurs. I made it through nearly 3 playthroughs of Fallout 3 before I learned how to repair my weapons without using a vendor. Jesus man. Playing Pokemon Leaf Green. At the very beginning, they say don't go into the tall grass. Once you go into said grass, the professor gives you your Pokemon. Naturally, being such a good little boy, I didn't go into the tall grass. That took me, 4 hours. I did similar on blue when I was 8, 
didn't realize I needed to drop the package off to Profoke so couldn't get last Viridian City. I was an easily amused child and still played the game anyway without any frustration. By the time I got to Taputa City I had a LVL 21 war total. Good times. I completed Pokemon Red without knowing how to change the order of my party Pokemon so all the monsters could be trained properly. I beat the Elite Four and the Champion with a level 85 Venusaur. All my other monsters were at about the same level as when I caught them. My first playthrough of Pokemon. I never got the hum for the Flash ability. Never met up with Ox Assistant. I just bumped my way through the Dark Caves. The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. I had absolutely no idea that you could wait. The simple feature that allowed you to simply select how many hours you wished to wait. One time I vividly remember wishing I had no it was during a mission from the Dark Brotherhood. The assassination in question was to sneak into a old guy's house, then hiding in his cloak room. When he sat down at literally the middle of the night you would drop one of his hunting trophies on him, killing him. So I had to wait several in-game hours, without no the ability to wait. So I sat with my dad for a couple of real time hours waiting for this guy to finally sit down. I remember that mission, and I'm sorry, there's also one mission somewhere in oblivion that you have to wait until a certain day part of the month. Good thing you didn't get to that one. Finished about 90% of Red Dead Redemption without knowing I could fast travel. Experienced one of the best game worlds I've ever played because of that mistake. My copy of Fallout 2 bugged and I played the whole game without a Pip-Boy. The Pip-Boy is not as essential as in Fallout 3 but still, game was a lot more fun on the second playthrough. As someone who was a FO2 lifer, playing the game without a Pip-Boy actually seems like an interesting challenge. For FO3, try playing the game without a HUD. You must remember people's names, locations, how much ammo and health you have, etc. I turned on subtitles in Portal. I didn't like them, so I turned them off. Then I played the entire game, all the way to the end. Then I thought, that's weird, shouldn't there have been dialogue? Turning off subtitles turned off the dialogue, too. Ugh. The next day I played it all the way through again, just to hear the dialogue. I finished Kingdom Hearts with the Kingdom Key because I didn't know you could change to different ones. Also I skipped Olympus Colosseum because I didn't know how to get in. Didn't know you had to sleep in Tez, Oblivion to level up. I made it about halfway through the story before accidentally discovering this. I was wondering why an imp could take 50 arrows and still be okay. The monsters in Oblivion scales with your level, so if you go back to the earliest sewers, you will get fricked by rats and stuff. Also means that the hardest enemies in the game can be killed semi-easily at level 1. I played through the entire Warcraft 3 campaign without using any skill points. Didn't know they were even there. I also didn't know the taxes in GTA 5 could instantly take you to your marked waypoint until after I finished single player. Space bar to pause an FTL. Not for too long, but perhaps 5-10 hours or so before I thought this is the hardest game in the world and looked up some online advice to work it out. It's still hard, it's just not sadistic anymore, and I can play with my trackpad. Come on that's in the tutorial. I played my PS3 for like 6 months before I realized that the controllers were wireless and I could unplug the USB cable. What? The wire is like an inch long. Skyrim, took me about 150 hours of gameplay before I realized I could use the wagon, I ran through the whole dang world sometimes. I played Command and Conquer for a good while before I realized that the truck you're given at the start of the first levels will expand into a base HQ, I simply used it to run over people. In FO3, a friend of mine had to do the BB gun shooting part for me since I had to pee. I didn't know about VATS for about 45 hours because of this. All that wasted ammo. I would never let someone play my campaign. Standing tackle in FIFA. My first FIFA game was 04, and it wasn't until 07 that I realized you could do standing tackles. I just ran into people, or did slide tackles dart. I miss the hack button from FIFA 98, used to lose all my matches by having all my men sent off. Oh this is a new one. Playing FF1 on the NES for the first time, had no idea you had to equip armor and weapons. 
I played through the entire game with a white, black mage with good spells, and a warrior monk with no weapons or armor. Dear god, I actually managed to beat it. I walked by those stones that give you bonus XP at the start of the game in Skyrim. You are supposed to choose a path to get boosted XP from, but I just skipped them entirely. Kind of a useless feature, but for years I didn't know you could store items in the PC on Pokemon games, would always sell used items. In Pokemon Yellow I went through the biggest cave completely in the dark because I didn't know how to light it up. Took hours and I was almost dead because of the constant battles in there. I remember yellow, I didn't know what to use against Brock years ago so I just leveled my Pikachu until it could beat him. I slammed that Mathefa King on X to death. Got GTA Vice City when it first came out, spent the first 2 weeks running around killing people, didn't realize there were any missions until I accidentally walked into the blip. The Star Wars Pod Racer game for N64. I didn't realize you could press B, maybe not B, after your charge was full to get a in 2 0 like massive speed boost. I thought the speed boost was minimal and was kicking in when the indicator was red. I was still winning, and I was happy with the challenge until I jammed on that little red button and then it was too easy. I played up to the end of the second CD of FF7 with Cloud's original Buster Sword. I thought that because the sword was on the cover that was his one and only sword. I fought tooth and nail in every fight having one gimp champ. It was only after the second CD when a friend came over and asked why I had the starting sword equipped that I realized my mistake. My parents hadn't owned a video game console since NES, but they bought a Wii for the sports games and enjoyed them a lot, so they figured they'd get a fun racing game, Mario Kart Wii. The next time I went over they expressed their frustration with the game. Sometimes when we're racing we'll just randomly spin out and stop. I don't understand why, so I figure I'll give it a run, see what they mean, pick a basic race, and any character, start off, just usual Mario Kart. Hit a box, get 3 red shells, use them, shells in circle like usual, shoot them at the person ahead of me, suddenly, mom pipes up, mom, whoa whoa, wait, how did you do that, me, what, the shells, you just hit this button here, mom, no kidding, sheesh that makes things way easier, me, you, you didn't realize you had power ups you could use, Mom. Shrug we were just playing it like a racing game. All the spinning out had just been the CPU characters using power ups. When I was a kid, maybe about 6 or 7, I got an N64 for Christmas with Super Mario 64. Wandered around the mansion for almost the entirety of Christmas day taking in the awesome 3D scenery and jumping around. Eventually I got bored and told my mum the game sucked. She had a go and figured out you had to jump through the painting to get to the first level. Yeah, that was a low point. My friend gave up, thinking the game was over. In Portal after Gladys said, this chamber is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. In Battlefield 4, I got to level 20 and had no idea what battle packs were. I had a crappy TV so I couldn't really read the text when I unlocked something. I decided to go to soldier progress and noticed I had like 12 battle packs to open. And they were all portraits and emblems that didn't appear on your battle log, with maybe an 8x scope for your PP2000. I've put about 1000 hours into TF2 and just now found out about trading sites. This whole time I've been trying to construct my own hats and trade them in trading servers which rarely ever get me results. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.